Welcome to Electron Line, and here's our fifth very special property about the water molecule. Again, without this particular property, we probably wouldn't be here. Life on Earth would be very, very different. So, what's so special? Well, water molecule has very many vibrational modes. Six here that are very special, that are very needed, and show you, I'll show you in just a moment why that is. So, how does a, a water molecule vibrate? Well, first of all, it can vibrate in a symmetrical way. So, imagine me being the oxygen molecule and my arms being the hydrogens. The hydrogens can go out and in and out and in and out and in like that. That's called symmetrical vibration of the hydrogen molecules. It can also do it asymmetrically. For example, you can have one going up while the other one goes down, and so the hydrogen molecules can vibrate like that. So there's different ways in which the molecule can have kinetic energy and express it in various vibrational modes, and I'll show you in just a moment why that is so important for us. The third one is the rocking. So the hydrogen molecules can rock back and forth like that in symmetry, or they can do a scissoring motion. The molecules can come back and forth like that, or they can rock like this. In other words, the water molecules can, I mean, the hydrogen atoms can rock back and forth like this. And finally, they can do a twisting motion where the molecule can twist back and forth like that. So all these various vibrational modes of the water molecule. Why is that important? Well, the Earth is 93 million miles away from the, oh, I was looking for my pen. I have it right in my hand here. The Earth is 93 million miles away from the sun. And that is actually a little bit too far. We always think that we live in the Goldilocks location for the, for the Earth in the solar system, but that's not quite true because the 93 million miles, we do not receive enough energy from the sun to keep the Earth warm, except for one thing. The atmosphere of the Earth has water molecules in them in terms of water vapor. On any given day, anywhere around the world, the atmosphere is anywhere from zero to 4%. And it's never really zero. It's always something above zero, from a little bit above zero to 4% depending upon if it's a very dry day or a very humid day. Now, what that means is with all those water molecules in the atmosphere, they can absorb the energy coming from the Earth by all these various vibrational modes. And it is able to absorb a vast quantity of the infrared radiation coming back from the Earth, keeping the Earth very nice and comfortable. Now, that may seem like a strange thing because don't we want to keep it from doing that because with more carbon dioxide doesn't the earth then keep getting warmer and warmer and warmer? Well it turns out carbon dioxide doesn't make a lot of difference in the atmosphere. It's the water molecule that makes most of the difference. Matter of fact, the water molecule provides more than 90% of the heat retention of the atmosphere where carbon is less carbon dioxide is less than 10%. So water vapor is what keeps us warm. If there was no water vapor in the atmosphere, the average temperature in the world would be somewhere about zero to two degrees Fahrenheit. So currently, the average temperature of the world, T average, is about equal to about 56, 57 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in that neighborhood, which is about equal to about 14 degrees centigrade, somewhere in that neighborhood, 14, 15 degrees centigrade for the average temperature of the world. Well, if water vapor wasn't in the atmosphere, the average temperature in the world would be somewhere between 0 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be somewhere between minus 16 to minus 18 degrees centigrade. That would be the average temperature of the world without water vapor. Even with all the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere we have there currently, that would be the average temperature. And boy, would the world be a very different place if that was the average temperature versus the <laughs> typical temperature in a cold day in the northern hemisphere. So, all these vibrational modes of water makes it a very special molecule. It is by itself solely responsible for controlling the climate of the Earth by controlling the amount of heat that escapes back to space. The other less than 10%, all the other molecules like carbon dioxide and methane and things like that in the atmosphere, which do a little bit of their part, but it's the water, it's the water molecule that is the primary constituent in the atmosphere that makes sure that we live in a nice, comfortable climate. So there you go. Very important property of water, and it's because of the structure of the water molecule that allows it to vibrate in all those various vibrational modes that other molecules can do. There you go.